<clears throat> All right. Hello, everybody. I'm by everybody, I mean me. And welcome to the Obscure Toy Files, where we recover obscure, unique, and unlicensed toys. But what's this, a Transformer? Isn't that a licensed toy? Technically, no, because it was created in-house by Hasbro, so it's one of their original intellectual properties. So we'll be covering today, we're talking about the Transformers MicroMaster Base, the Ground Shaker Vehicle. This came out in 1989, 88. It says 88 in the back of the package, but I think it was I think it was made in 88. So you might have been able to find these in like early 88. Really, but really more or less it was 1989 at that point. And this is one of the last really good things they started to do. Uh, because once we get 1990, we started getting Action Masters and other such, other sorts of Micro Masters. And the line didn't really... They weren't really trying as much anymore, I think. I don't know what was going on, but you can definitely see that a lot of the... Like, you look at the 1988 product line, and then you look at the 1989 product line, and then the 1990 product line. You can see everything was just going, like... It was going downhill. Uh, in Japan, it kept going, but here we kind of went... And then that was that. And then they came back a few years later and did Transformers Generation 2 and brought it back to basics. But the main point of my review today is I'm talking about uh, cross compatibility with this set and modern uh, small Transformer toys. So let's give you a look at the box because I love getting old packaging and to actually have this in hand is really cool to me because I haven't seen any of these packages in years. Uh, but I got it off of eBay for a very good price. This is the, uh, I'm trying to get this in the shot for you guys. That's the new Transformers logo. M more, much more than meets the eye. This is, started doing this in, like, the Pretenders, uh, after the, when, when the small Pretenders came out, like, uh, Octopunch and Bludgeon and all those guys. So this is when the packaging started to take this design where, you know, still red and pr purple for Autobots and Septicons, but you still had this, like this much like this red, white, and blue Transformers thing. And it, it tried taking it on a much more like late 80s, early 90s type of look. So like on the top of the box, uh, you got, it says vehicle transforms to base and back again. It shows you how to start and then you're slowly changing it and changing it and changing it and you finish there. No, I don't have uh, the little jet or the ramps, but the vehicle itself is intact. It has all of its pieces. Uh, so I, was, I, was, I, still, I still wanted to show it. it. Most of the review is not a review of what this is, but what it can do today with modern toys. And just a little fun, right over here on the other side, we have an original Toys R Us sticker showing us that this costs $12.99, which I put through the inflation calculator, and it comes down to about $26.50 something cents. So... I paid 34 in change for this on eBay with free shipping, so a little bit more than I would have paid if it was at retail, but I figured, you know, it's not that bad of a thing. In the back of the box, it shows uh, artwork for Ground Shaker, and it says, well, that was close. One more shot like that, and they'll be serving Ground Shaker stew at the next district on barbecue. Autobots keep firing, and don't tell us rotors are history. And then you see... Uh, I think I've seen, instead of it being like a big painting, it's like a comic book style sketch where you have like the ground shaker with ground shaker and then the skyhopper with skyhopper going back and forth. And I think some of these are some of the characters from the uh, Autobot, uh, one of the Autobot car patrols. Like that Swindler, he's available as a, uh, a MicroMaster for the Siege line that's out, but he didn't make the cut. I haven't picked them up yet. I'm still looking for them, waiting for them to come out. But, you know, that even has the uh, bio card to tech specs. Tech specs really don't talk a lot about him as a person. Um, he has a rank of 8, which means that he's pretty high up there. Like, the rank of 10 is Optimus Prime. Uh, and his function is, Ground Shaker's function is Field Commander. It says, a life without risk is a life without reward. A rowdy, rebellious robot likes to be where the action is. And then basically now it just goes into what his vehicle is. At his best, crashing his titanium steel self-propelled cannon through enemy barricades just so he can unload his X-ray laser cannon, sonic boomers, and automatic machine gun into the Septicons. Converts his ATV vehicle into a battle station and helipad, also equipped with awesome ultraviolet radar that guards against the Decepticon attacks. I don't know how much of that actually makes sense, but it's there. 
Let me look at the stats. These might be for the vehicle itself. I have no idea. But his strength is a 7. His intelligence is a 7. His speed is a 3. His endurance is an 8. His rank is an 8. His courage is a 10. So he's very, very brave. His firepower is an 8. And that's the damage from his primary weapon. Whatever that, probably that big cannon. Uh, and his skills an 8. So this guy's pretty good, except for his speed. He's slow. Which makes sense, because this is a big truck. We also get 2 robot points. That we can save for something that doesn't exist. And micro size is the power to surprise. Don't forget that. Now, all right, so now we got this set. Let's go and open them up and take them out. Yeah, he's already been opened. It's like his brand. The condition of the thing is pretty good. Like this box, and I'll put that over there. I know that old school package. Right? Okay. Yeah, he hasn't any stickers on him at all. So, thanks to repro labels or toy hacks, as they call them now, I just ordered some. Uh, today, so I can have them to put on him later. Now, you get these all these weapons, which is really cool. You get this big cannon, and this cannon has like a pivoting point that can ratchet up a little bit, and then it ratchets down, and it can turn. And then you have this other gun, and this gun pegs into this hole in the top. But you have to take care that, like, it'll separate a little bit. Like, if you look close, it's actually two halves that are screwed together. So make sure that screw is tight, or figure out, or we just don't put it in too much. But it still separates a little bit, so just make sure if you have one to keep an eye on that. But they're nice plastic, it feels good. And uh, let's see, let's get this put into the ground shaker vehicle itself. Actually, I'll pause this for a moment, we'll be back in a flash. And we're back. All right, so it's in there, and it's on a slide grip. So you can see like slide back and forth, so you can keep it Back here, be like, <coughs> blow stuff up. These pivot on five millimeter pegs. Uh, you can do that, or you can slide it up more, like right there, and put a guy behind there. So, for the point of this review, I'm going to be showing off some newer toys that will work pretty well with this. These are, you know them from newer lines. These are Prime Masters. This is Landmine and Metalhawk. And we got Cloudburst, where you can't see. There he is. We also have Payload, who's a little Autobot shuttle from the Thrilling 30 line from a few years ago. He came with Cosmos. He's a little smaller than them. What else we got? We got Lionizer from Transformer Siege, who just back kicked Payload in the face for some reason. I guess he didn't like him. And then we got. Shuffler from Titan's Return. And also from Siege, we have Hot Rods, or Rodimus Prime's Target Master, Fire Drive, or Firebolt as he's called in the original G1 line, which is what I'll be referring to him as for the rest of this review, because that's his name. So you have all these guys, you have this big vehicle. So you can put them in there, and there's a little stand, and they kind of go in there pretty good. Like once you stick them inside, Open to something. That's it. He's right there. Boom. That's him. He's in. The, he is now in the car. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. He was sitting there like, "Let's go, guys." You can go in the back. You gotta make. Might have to take off their uh, back weapons because otherwise they get in the way. So those can come off. And uh, just stick him in there. Maybe not. <laughs> I guess not. They can hang like that. They work pretty good like that. Not too bad. A little bit needs a little work. But let's transform it into base mode. And that's what we'll show off how it really works well. So pull everybody out. Got to take off these side thingies, which are called Sonic Boomers. This one has blue stuff on it for some reason. I don't know why. And then we basically we pull this back. Clicks. And you fold this up. And then you just take these and just separate them there. I have to hold it by the base because it's a little tight on that side. Slide this back. These have things that come out here. Flip this over. I need to tab right to there. Not really tab hard. They just kind of like nestle in there. I kind of want to push them too hard because I'm afraid of they'll break. You can take this cannon off of here. And then you can just start putting them in different spots. Like you can put this cannon here. 
pieces of that. Take these sonic boomers, put one here. Put another one there. And the ramps would be here so they can roll up, but none of these guys are really cars, so it doesn't make a difference. But using this in the modern line, this even comes off. If you don't want to have it there, I'll just put it somewhere else or put it here. You know, so you can have like a guy, like like Metal Hawk that commands everybody. They're like, come on guys, let's go, we gotta go do stuff. We have a vehicle now, we're useful. Hooray, micro pretenders have the power to do stuff. We don't suck anymore. Hooray for old toys. Yeah, but also what you can do is since now it's five millimeter compatible, you can take all sorts of stuff. So you can take Shuffle here and transform into his, him into his missile pod. And then just attach him there. So now Shuffler is basically a, another missile pod on this giant already death machine. You can take payload, fold him back, push that down, turn him into his gun mode. Oh, I screwed up. There we go. Like my hand's trapped. You can attach that to the top if you feel like it to give it some extra firepower. And, uh, same can be said of, let's see, let's spin around to this side. Yeah, it's really only, this one doesn't have as many 5mm uh, pegs as, uh, as the Skyhopper does. So I'll show, I'll be doing that one soon. Okay, so we have this. Now, here's something cool you can do. So you can then take your guy, take uh, your pretender in a robot, aka Prime Master, out. Take this, transform it into... Weapon mode. Stick it in there. Then take him. And make it into like a little gun emplacement. Kind of like a turret or something. Just peg him in there. So it's like... It's like so this thing is now bristling with weaponry. There is nobody who's coming anywhere near this thing. We're not getting their head blown off. Which is kind of neat. So you can put him like back here and have him manning the turret. We're going to have him over here, manning that gun. This thing slides back and forth, so you can really be like... So this thing is just now bristling with weaponry. We're going to take payload from over here, because... We need somebody to sit... So who can fly? We need someone to go on this thing. How come there are no helicopters? Payload can sit there. You know, fire drive manning this giant gun instead of becoming a gun himself. Try to stand up. There we go. Yeah, so it's really cool. I mean, this, these, these micro-missile places have been becoming very popular with me in the last few days because I've been able to acquire them all. Not all of them. I have this one in the um, Skyhopper for the Decepticons, which is a really cool helicopter. I got that with the box, too. And they work really well with these smaller Transformers from you know, recent years. So it's really, it's a lot of fun. And it definitely makes them, you know, more useful. I mean... The target mastery guys, the prime, even if, not even including like take these guys out of the equation, you know, because he turns into a, a you know a target master basically, so he's pretty good. But all these other guys, like the like the mini pretenders, like the mini pretenders seem kind of like they were missing out on something because they just turned into a gun. But now it's like, hey, you know what? You can have them actually be part of these little adventures more now because now they have like they can you know like they have this vehicle over there and they can drive around in. You know, and uh, it actually makes them more fun because it really gives them something to do instead of just sitting around doing absolutely nothing all the time. Now I got a little closer view of the other thing that's happening behind the scenes. Yeah, so this works pretty well. So it's like, it's like this big cannon and the little dude drives it. And even like the base itself, like as I zoom in, you can see like all the little details they put into it. Like there's a computer monitor in there. Get it out of the way. There's all sorts of little things. So it's a good... Uh, place to set up camp with them. It's a very cool vehicle. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It looks really good. And it's good as a... It's, it's, when you look at this thing when it's in vehicle mode, you definitely know, like, nobody's messing with that. Yeah, so this thing is basically loaded to the gills. And, uh, like I said, it's a lot of fun. But especially with these pretenders, it really helps them become much more useful in the line. I never really liked the whole idea of them turning into weapons because they look like square they're like rectangles with guns sticking out of them. But they were great as turrets. Put them in a look back in there, seal them up. 
Now let's transform this back into its ATV mode. Yeah, this just kind of sits there. You really can't stick anybody underneath there. It's not a lot of room. Put it up there, pull that out, pull this down. Okay, so now we got all that going on. I don't think there's supposed to be a piece here. Maybe there was. I don't know. It doesn't look like there's supposed to be. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, oh, yeah, because there's a ramp supposed to go here. It's supposed to be like that. I'm like, this is missing a piece. So let's fold this back up. These tabs will click in there. Now, since this is open in the back, you can even drive it this way if you want to have it you know, open more. But like I said, let's see if we can get these guys in here so they can drive around. Okay, there you go. If you want to make it easier, take this out. That frees up a lot more space. Like a lot more space. I mean, you can put him right back there. Let's fit right. Oh my god, I mean Oh Jesus. It's been squished. Mother of primacies. Oh god, the humanity. Yeah, because I won't go up with that. Alright, so. But this is the same thing with the uh the Skyhopper. You really can only fit like one guy in it. You might be able to get away with uh Putting one more guy back there, or actually, if you take these things off and just stick them in there from somewhere else, you can then take these guys and pick them into the side. Let's see, put this in. Where can I close it? I hurt myself. There we go. There you go. <laughs> That actually looks pretty good. <laughs> that works. But now where will these go? <laughs> oh, there's always something left over. Yeah, these you can you really just kind of just drop in there if you feel like it. Or just take them off. They weren't really getting very they weren't very good with the self-contained features back then. But they're definitely on the right path. So yeah, this is the MicroMaster base ground shaker ATV vehicle. And if you have the opportunity to buy one. Totally pick it up. I'm imagining that once the, the more and more MicroMasters start coming out in the Siege line, that people will start pursuing these older vehicles and bases. So I think it'd be really good for everybody to jump on it right away before the hype starts, and all of a sudden these things start going from more and more on eBay. Like I said, this was $34 and change for free shipping, which is a good price. It's in pretty good shape. It's a little dusty, but I have to clean it up. But I, I, I love it. It's a really cool vehicle. And it works very well with the other, these little, especially with these guys. The other guys, are, these guys are useful on their own. They can, do their, they can become weapons and stuff. But these dudes, they need, to, they need a little boost. And this giant chunk of a <laughs> military vehicle definitely helps them out. And it'll look much, much better with the stickers on it. All right. So that is us for right now. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out more videos coming out soon with more... Uh, reviews on these old school uh, MicroMaster playsets. As, as more Siege toys start coming out, I'll start reviewing them too. And I'll show, them how, show you guys how they cross-play and everything else. But that's it for right now. This is Landmine saying, thank you for watching. See you next time. I'm out here in Belgium. Ho, ho, ho. Turn off the camera. We gotta go.